Welcome to Super Dave Reigns and the Big Show on location at Escape Velocity Comics here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We are here with award winning author John E. Stith, author of collections All for Not, books Reckoning Infinity, Reunion on Never End, Manhattan Transfer, and Scapescope, just to name a few. Thank you and welcome to the show. Thanks very much. You've won uh, awards for your amazing work almost every year since 1986. How do you do it, and can you help the folks in Hollywood that can't seem to write a decent script for anything <laughs> these days? Well, I have to, the uh, truth in advertising, I have to admit that, you know, my, my record stopped in the uh, mid-90s. Right. I've had a large gap in my career. Uh, life intervened in some big ways. Right. As it always does, As definitely. It does, yeah. But uh, I'm trying to do my part. I've written a number of screenplays right. that I'm uh, marketing. Uh, I've had uh, several properties under option at various times. Right. And uh, there is currently a low budget film producer who wants to do a pilot of Manhattan Transfer, which is uh, my novel in which. The entire island of Manhattan is right. ripped loose from the surface of the Earth and put aboard a giant starship. Wow. wow. With a bunch of other alien cities. Yeah, excellent. But even with your your um, gap, you, you've done a lot of that. You've done a lot of work, and we're going to kind of get into that. Okay. And um, I see that you have been very successful in, um, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, but transferring your work as an author to different mediums so okay. uh, but uh, that's that's fantastic um, so let me ask you this uh, which came first was it uh, neverend.com or the book reunion on nevermind which did you come the up book with? came first okay all right and when I was looking around for the shortest possible URL right that was still available Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about that book? Uh, sure. Uh, that book was inspired by uh, attending a high school reunion oh, and being wow. really struck by how some people and some things had just changed completely. Right. And some some things, people were exactly the way I left them. Uh, right. And. Never End is a remote planet on the edge of the galaxy. Right. I grew up mainly in Alamogordo, New Mexico, which right. felt that way to a, yeah. to a team. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, in it, uh, our hero discovers a, a long, unused interstellar transportation system. Oh, kind of, wow. kind of reminiscent of the Stargate. Yeah. And yeah. when I was trying to sell rights to the book, one of the people I approached was Roland Emery. Oh, and wow. The response was, well, this is, you know, we got Stargate in the works now. Right, this is right. Kind of similar, so that wow. ruined my chances for a while. So. Yeah, that's amazing how you can come up with something and someone at the same time has got kind of a similar idea. Right. So, wow, excellent. Um, Tell us about the upcoming webisode series starring, uh, is it Ben Browder? Right. Uh, called Not For Hire. Right. That is unfortunately stalled right now. Okay. The producer and I need to do a rewrite on it. Right. And he has had a number of challenges. His, uh, his wife is doing okay now, but she, uh, well, I guess that gets into an area that I, I don't know if I can share. But yeah, I mean you don't have to. He and his family have had some significant health challenges. Right. And and a lot of us have done non book and non film things. Right. To pay the bills while we're doing what we love. Right. And exactly. he has some of that going on. That, right. That uh, interferes. And, but I'm hoping, you know, that later this year we'll get back to it. So. Right, excellent. So how often are, are rewrites done? Is that a normal thing? I mean... Uh, yeah, it's, in that business, it's, okay. it's a fact of life. Right. Uh, we, this was pitched to the Sci-Fi Channel at one point. Oh, wow. And they, their response was that they wanted more eye candy. Ah, uh, see. First we thought, always could use more eye candy, folks. But, no. Well, at yeah. first we th we thought, you know, that meant beautiful women. Right, right. But to them, it doesn't. But to, oh. me, to them, it means high tech and, and oh, visuals. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. It's totally different. I'm 
I was totally wrong. <laughs> so that's an easy mistake. Right. Exactly. So um, let me ask you: How has Amazon changed the game for authors? And did you ever imagine that sci-fi action adventure would become what it is today? Um, well, Amazon has you know completely changed the market. Right. They uh, when I, the last major book contract I sold. Uh, they let me return electronic rights. Oh wow! And that has changed. Uh, wow, that's big since then. Uh, certainly, Amazon has opened the gate for uh, niche books that just don't speak to a, a broad market. Right. Uh, it opens the door to great books that may just not, you know, the gatekeepers that major publishers may, just may not get it. Or right. It. Uh, and so there's a lot of great independent work being done, but there's also some work, you know, a niche being done by people who haven't really learned the craft yet. Right. And it's so easy to publish that that those folks are kind of giving a bad name to the people who have spent the time to, to learn the craft, even right. though they don't have to get through it. Right. Get past an editor anymore. Right. And I'm gonna I've got some questions about that a little bit later. Okay. So but uh, so do you like I was saying before, did, did you imagine that sci-fi and action and adventure would become what it is? I mean, we're here in, at Escape Velocity, and you can see all the different comics and books. Did you imagine it becoming that big when you started? Uh, well, it comes and goes. Uh, right. It, it was fairly big when I, around the time I started. Right. Uh, Star Wars came out. You know, yes, and, absolutely. And gave, gave things a giant shot. You know. But... Uh, there was a period in the late 90s where it was kind of retrenching. It, it, it right. Rose and, and right, so you're saying it, it just kind of ebbs and flows. Right. Okay. But, you know, when you look at uh, the major box office movies, you know, science right. fiction has a huge uh, hand in yeah, it. Yeah, it, it does. It really does. So does uh, action and adventure. I would absolutely agree with that. So, of all the books that you've written, which one is your favorite? Probably Manhattan Transfer. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, I just had a lot of fun with that. And okay. Excellent. I wrote that book after I had written some screenplays. Right. And so I helped that process. I think helped make me a more visual writer right. than I had been. Uh, and that one was probably done the best of, of my novels. Right. So. Excellent. Excellent. Lots of reasons to love. Yeah. Them. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So. Um, this month marks the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, and sadly, we lost uh, Anton Yeltsin to a freak accident. Are you a fan of Gene Roddenberry's work, and which is better, Star Wars or Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, do I piss off that half yeah. of the market, or, yeah. or that half? Right. Uh, I, I love them both. And, right. And I, I really love Roddenberry's view of the future. Of the right. Still has problems, but but people get along. Yeah, and there are more important things to fight about than divisions of, of people. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I love them both too, folks. So <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of both. Uh, so I just thought I'd throw that in since right. you're such a, a big sci-fi author. Um, uh, tell us about how it felt when your first book, I think it was was Escape Scope. Right. was published and what are you what are you working on now okay uh, well getting skip scope published was a giant thrill uh, right uh, I was uh, I fortunately found an agent who was willing to market the book right and he started that process and I started on on my second book and my second book took me about a year memory blank and I was at the copy store right making a copy of it to send to him. When I got the guy at the desk called me up and said, <clears throat> "Hey, your wife is on the phone." Right. And she said, "The agent just called. Your yeah. Facebook just sold." So, oh wow, that's, so, that, that's exciting. Yeah. So, but one message is, don't wait until something happens with the first thing. To right. To keep going to the next. Right. It sounds like you've got several plans for your. For I, I do, and uh, hopefully they'll all come to fruition. <laughs> so, uh, you have sold some of your work to film and television. Can you share what it's like to see your 
work translate into another media outside of books? And can you tell us about science fiction, science fact? Okay. Uh, I've had very limited success in actually going all the way to film. Right. Uh, the only thing I wrote that made it to, to film right. was, was a drama that I co-wrote with the writer-director. Right. And she ran out of money during post-production right. because of star problems in, yeah. in production. Right. And I have a VHS copy that, that has a rough cut of sound, but that's all it exists. Wow. And it was kind of a personal project for her, so right. I think she got it out of her system, and I don't think anything more is going to be done. With wow. Her. A friend uh, and I wrote uh, a treat, uh, a, we pitched to Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Oh, wow, a, that is really cool. A, a, uh, an idea. Right. Uh, and paid us to do a treatment, but then they didn't receive it. Right. I suppose that, you know, the industry's like start and stop sometimes. It, it does, and there's just all kinds of reasons that a given project won't go forward. Right. In, in our story, we had someone in a wheelchair, and they already had someone in a wheelchair in right. another episode that season. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, John, I see both of us served in the Air Force. Uh, how did being an Air Force officer and serving in Air Force Space Command and NASA at Goddard Center shape your writing? Um, I, I'd say that mainly the military gives you more responsibility you right. know, than the, the civilian world is right. when you're starting out. Right, absolutely. And so that, I think that helped me grow as a person. And yeah. I used my, the NORAD Shine Mountain Complex as right. the background for my first novel, Escape Scope. Right, excellent. And it, you know, a couple of years, a couple hundred years in the future, I imagined that that, that complex might be sold for military surplus. Right. And uh, <laughs> uh, this is where it moves into it. So, right. Uh, but, but in general, not a lot of my work life makes it into my fiction. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you that because both of us were stationed at NORAD, and right. it took me six months to kind of figure my way around on the inside. Right. But uh, it was an ex it's an experience that few people can say they they've had in life. That location was so strong. That's one. Right. Wanted to use yeah. It. Absolutely. Um, you're a member of various writing organizations, science fiction and fantasy writers of America, mystery writers of America, Writers Guild of America, just to name a few. How did these organizations help up-and-coming writers? Uh, one of the ways uh, CEFWA, the Science Fiction Fantasy Writers right. of America, helps writers is we've produced uh, sample contracts so that people can, if they get a contract from a publisher, they right. can compare clauses and find out what's and find out what's abusive and what's normal. Right. Okay. Awesome. So people do sign abusive contracts. Yeah, I'm uh, sure that does. nowadays because yeah. you have other options nowadays. Right. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. We hope that doesn't happen. So, um, John, thank you for, so much for your time and thank you for appearing on Super Dave Reigns and the Big Show at Escape Velocity Comics. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, award-winning, legendary science fiction author, Mr. John E. Stitt. Um, I'm Super Dave Rains, and until next time, own the love. Thank Pleasure. You. Pleasure.